You won't serve that significant other, but and you, but you're expecting them to serve you. You're not willing to love that person correctly, but you're expecting them to love you correctly. Here's the other thing, because this is in reference to narcissism. Even if you're a narcissist, even if you don't realize you're a narcissist, you're actually still in a, a physical, tangible embodiment of love. God created all of us to one, love correctly and to be loved correctly. We're created to love correctly and to be loved correctly. God created us in that manner. But a lot of different things that transpired in our own personal lives to where some people love correctly, excessively. And so we find ourselves gravitating to people that don't love correctly, excessively, or don't love at all, right? So, or, but those are extreme. If you want to have a healthy relationship, you have to learn how to love that person correctly, not just one time, not just one day, but try your best to do it consistently. You can't not do it 24-7. You can't be in your sleep <laughs> loving a person correctly. That's not how that works, right? You're at work. You can't really do that while you're at work, right? But when you're in the presence of that person, you would want to do it. Text messages, talking to them every whenever you can, making free time, making time to do things, making time to do things that that person would like to do. These are all expressions of a love language. Now, here's the thing. How do you find out what your love language is? Well, my friends, you are in for a treat. Um, you're going to go back to that same website that I told you about. It's called the five love languages.com. That's five, the number five love languages.com. And you're going to go to that website. Upon going to that website, uh, five love languages.com, um, you're going to click a tab and it's going to tell you to go to quizzes. You go to quizzes and we're going to go to love. Majority of us are in relationships. We're dating, we're talking, we're in a courtship. So you're going to pick. Uh, begin couples quiz right you give them your information your first name last name you give them your email because you're going to need that in order for you to get your results let them know that you are male or female or if you prefer not to say then okay praise God put your age put what country you're in whether you're married not married um even if you have have or have not read the five love languages by Gary Chapman please ensure that you like let them know just know if you did um, they got some other different things. You click I understand, click start, and then you commence with the test. So with me, my personal love language, my primary love language is actually words of affirmation. My secondary love language is actually quality time. So <laughs> with that said, um, I'm actually in courtship with a young lady. She's a dope young lady. I care about her a lot. I thank God for her. I'm saying this in reference to us understanding our love languages, right? And so we are in and we are in the process of still learning about each other. And what I've said before is if we don't apply, it's I'll say it like this. It's important that we apply what we learn about one another, not just the things that make you upset, the things that make you angry, the things that break your heart. What about the things that Feel your love tank and that's according that's a phrase love tank is a phrase according to the five love languages what type of things make you feel loved and appreciated right and um in our courtship that's what we're actually working on how do we communicate with each other what do you like don't like and then we consistently the both of us how can we consistently work on those things to better the thing to, to, to better our speaking your love language practice makes perfect you don't just immediately just start learning different languages and you, you're speaking immediately that's not how that works you, you it's going to be a trial and error okay um for example, I speak Spanish, I read, I write it, right? There's times where I will make mistakes in my grammar. I will make mistakes in my grammar. <laughs> Even in my uh, enunciations, there's a few times where like, cause it's a certain way you say things in Spanish, I will say it wrong. So I have to correct those things in order to better my Spanish. Not only I have to better my Spanish, I have to listen. I have to listen to the other person. Hey, they're having a conversation with me. So I can't just immediately switch back to English. I got to stay consistent in Spanish and continue speaking Spanish to them. The same thing applies with your love language or with you learning somebody else's love language. You're going to practice that love language. You're going to study that love language. In studying that love language, you're actually studying 
them. You're learning about them. They're going to be telling you things or they're going to be doing things. You're going to be asking questions. They'll let you know, hey, this is how I feel appreciated. This is how I don't feel appreciated. Da, 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 da. But you're listening and you're applying. And the same thing should be transpiring with that other person. So that's uh, the case with me and this dope young lady. And I can honestly say, at least for me, this is the first time I actively and i'll say it like this this is the first time i've actively been in a, uh, i've been in a relationship where the woman is like i'm going to do my best because it's not just about me and you know sometimes i feel some type of way being transparent with you guys this times i feel some type of way like man for real but we're learning about each other 